guys, how's it going? It's Easy Kill the Barber back with another YouTube video for you. On today's client, we'll actually be doing a bald fade. Um, he actually wants to wear his hair kind of in a slick back hairstyle. So it'll be a slick back hairstyle on top with a bald fade on the sides, okay? So let's get started. So we'll start this haircut out by using a wall senior clipper. Now whether it's a wall guard or a babyless guard, it's the same thing, they both work. In this case, I'm using a babyless guard. So I'm gonna start using this three guard and I just wanna get a nice clean palette. This client has a lot of hair. I mean, this is basically a quarantine cut. My man's been locked away for some months, so it's time for a haircut. So the easiest way to get him to this bald fade for me is to just get everything to the same even length. So since we're gonna be doing a bald fade, I think it's okay to use a three guard to get most of the hair off so that we'll be able to have a clean workable palette to work from. So that's why I just like to just start by getting all this hair off the sides. I'll also continue the same process through the back. Once again, the wall senior clipper, I mean, it cuts through this hair almost effortless. That's why I love this clipper. Now I do get this clipper sharpened, but aside from that, these clippers cut really well just right out of the box. I've always been a fan of wall clippers, in fact, this is what I started cutting hair with is using a wall clipper. So it's tearing this hair off. I mean, it's getting rid of this stuff pretty quick. Most of the problem is getting out of there. So we want to pull that ear. You don't want to cut the ear. A lot of times when they have really long hair, it's really easy to uh, cut the ear because you just don't see it. So much hair there. So I like to use the comb to also pull up the hair that I want to keep. But the hair that I want to get rid of, just let the guard just do its work. As you can see, I'm just uh, cutting around the head, kind of working uh, it towards the top, going straight up. Now, once everything is nice and clean, then I can start my next guideline. Now, since he does want to go to bald, I'm just going to use a closed wall clipper. So it's this same wall senior clipper but we're just gonna close that lever up all the way take that guard off and then this is the look that you get almost like a stubbly bald look not completely bald but pretty close to it now this client likes to do a mid to high fade so I like to go down about midway now I can always bring my fade up but I can't you know put any hair back and bring it down so I like to start off kind of you know mid low when I do my mid to high fades just to give me some room to kind of play with so I'll make this guideline literally all the way around just cutting as smooth as I possibly can anytime I cut around the ears pull the ears just make sure I avoid that area make sure everything's nice and clean before I attempt to uh, cut back there and yeah we'll do this on both sides even on this side you want to always feel uh, for any abrasions or anything if they have any long hair it's always good to try to kind of feel or a lot of times they'll tell you if they have anything there sometimes you'll have issues and you won't even see anything there and for some reason um, the blade will have trouble going over certain little you know abrasions in their skin so you always just want to be really um, cautious and and try to avoid anything like that when you're cutting hair I like to try and cut as safe as I possibly can and as smooth as I possibly can so that's looking pretty good here um, now we can go to the next step since he wants to style his hair backwards I like to kind of comb their hair in the direction uh, and cut their hair in the direction that they plan on styling their hair. So in this case, since he wanted to style his hair backwards, I, you know, I normally like to go ahead and work my haircut into that. So here I just got some water, sprayed it in this hair, kind of form the haircut back, and then I'll do my cut based off of that. Now the only thing I have to do here is find my guideline. I like to show them the mirror. They tell me how much they want off. This is where we're cutting. Okay, perfect. Now, things can always change. I can't put the hair back, but at least um, I kind of got a good idea of where they want to be. This looks about right. Uh, so everything looks right to him. It looks right to me. So since I found my first guideline, I'm just going to follow that guideline and just cut the rest of the hair. 
so you'll see the guideline that I cut and any hair that sticks out of that guideline I just want to match it so I'll grab a portion of the guideline and then cut the rest of the hair everything matches in so I'll grab a portion of the guideline and a portion of the long hair and then anything that sticks out of that and I'll kind of make everything neat the long hair with the guideline boom look smooth grab the long hair the guideline make it neat boom smooth grab the long hair grab the guideline make it neat boom smooth we'll do this pretty much all the way around the haircut grab that guideline grab the long hair make it neat boom so when you do a guideline it's easy to kind of keep track of the length of the hair all the way around the cut you want to make sure you do this all the way around I like to cross check my hair um, and basically cut in a cross direction just to make sure that everything is uh, even as well from all angles. So I'll grab that guideline, the hair that's sticking out, we'll cut and get rid of. We'll follow that same process until everything is pretty much even. Now with these type of haircuts, I also like to use um, what's called thinning shears. So I'll use those thinning shears to kind of thin the hair out. Thinning shears are good for kind of adding that texture. They're also called uh, texturizing shears. So I like to use these shears. That's what I'm using now to kind of add that texture. I always like to grab a thick comb and use that for texturizing. I like to keep the hair off with a blow dryer. I like to blow dry the hair to keep any loose hair off that I just cut. And then since his hair was so long, I think it's a really good idea to re-wet his hair and then go back and check the length again just to make sure everything is good. Also form the haircut back with the comb and the water. This kind of mimics gel, that's what I like water for. And then anything that sticks out over this comb, basically I like to cut off and form to the top of the haircut. So everything I like to do in sections. So now you're getting a chance to see what's called the clipper over comb technique where this is a really fast technique you don't necessarily have to grab the guard you just uh, I like to use a really thick comb from this for this process it just kind of eliminates air um, it eliminates putting bald spots in people's hair the thicker the comb is so this comb is kind of thick I'll pull that comb out to see exactly what I want to cut anything that sticks over the comb on what I would like to cut then that's what I cut so you get a chance to kind of see exactly how that uh, looks here so now here I'm just basically finishing up my guideline I just you know like I told you I could always bring it up but I can't take it down so now I see that I want to go up a little bit more in this area on his fade make that guideline a little bit smoother so now sometimes you can kind of without taking out the bottom line normally I would just set a guideline and take out the bottom line uh, that I just said merge the bottom into the new guideline but in this case I'm going to use a half clip and set my next guideline and then I'll just come back and bump out the two guidelines uh, that I just set so there's no right or wrong way to cut hair I mean as you can see um, you know when you get really good it's all about knowing what length you need you know when you need a one guard when you need that half guard when you need to use no guards at all to just bald a certain spot out you know that's you know ultimately what you're gonna want to get to so right now I'm using that half guard to set the next guideline you see a dark line that's still left from that guideline that still needs to be merged in so that's the bottom line that I'm telling you after each guideline you need to attack that bottom line that's what merges the fades and brings the fades together now you never want to keep fading too high because if you go high on a guideline you could take the fade all the way up I mean you could take that one guard all the way up to where his hair is and that's of course not a fade so you want you know you want to really stick with the um, fading process so we have this half guard we'll set this next guideline okay so you see the guideline being set right there before your eyes so we'll attack the bottom line of both guidelines with this half 
we'll set this guideline all the way around. Once again, this is a half guard. We're only going up, it looks like about a quarter inch on each stroke. So I'm taking that half guard and I'm taking it lower, merging in whatever you know hard lines I see. Taking that half guard and allowing it to uh, fade any of the guidelines that I've just said. Now, technically, we used a open half, which is the equivalent to a one. Uh, so anything, you know, under that, which is a closed half uh, clipper, is a true half. So when you close that clipper all the way up and you're using a half guard, that's a true half. But when you put that half guard on and you open it up, that's sort of like a one. You know, it's double a half, which is equivalent to a one. Hopefully that makes sense. So in this case, we're using the one and a half guard. We jumped over the one guard from the half to the one guard and we use the one and a half. Now we're going to use this one and a half open in the parietal ridge area. So that's from the corner of the head transitioning to the top of the head. That's considered the parietal ridge area. So we're using that one and a half guard. We're just working that up and down. Now the clipper is all the way open, meaning that lever is all the way down, meaning this is not a true one and a half. Even though the one and a half guard is on there, the clipper is not all the way closed, meaning if it was all the way closed, that'll be a true one and a half. This is more or less a two guard. So we're just using this technique um, because when we go back and close that guard, the true one and a half, we're gonna slightly use that lower. So that's basically what I'm doing now. I have that guard closed to a true one and a half. The line that you see there, I'm just trying to attack that line. So it looks like I'm gonna need the one guard finally to attack that line. So I started with the clipper open. Now I closed it, I went back open, now I closed the clipper again. So I'll go a combination of opening and closing this clipper. The higher I am on the fade, the, high, the more the clipper is open. The closer and lower I am to transitioning on that fade, the more I close my clipper and that lever. And then I'll just attack that line. Now anything under a half, that one guard is not gonna cut anyway. So even if the, I go low on the bottom, nothing's being affected. The problem is if I take that one guard and I go high, kind of like where I use that one and a half, that's where things can kind of start changing. Because it is what it is. So you want to make sure that you don't, you know, go too high on those guidelines, that you just attack the line only. So once you set a guideline, just attack the bottom line. That's the bottom line. So this fade's starting to finally come together. I'm using that one clipper opening and closing that clipper. Whenever I, you know, get closer to the bottom of where that hard line is, I close the clipper to attack it. Whenever I get high, higher in the fade, I open that clipper again. Also, you notice that I use my comb to kind of keep any hair that I want to keep on the top away from being cut. So here comes the two guard. Now we're gonna use that two guard a little higher. Now this time, instead of using, you know, an open two guard, I like to kind of close things up. It's tighter. The fade's already setting in, so I'm just merging, you know, the side into the top of that hair. So I'm going left, right, left, right from all angles, making sure that hair gets really even. That ensures that the fade is as clean as you possibly can. You know, you gotta go all directions because hair grows in all directions. So I'll continue this all the way around. And as you can see with these haircuts, whatever I've done on the left, I've simply done on the right as well. Pulling the top hair away so that I won't cut that hair. Just like to cut smart and really safe and smooth. You, know, you don't have to jam the clippers into your client's head or jam guards in. So this is the half guard, plastic guard. Now this is a half fabulous guard. I like that. Uh, it's a really good guard as far as, you know, blending in from that bald or that half into that one. 
I see a hard line in there, and I just wanted to put that half guard on and attack that little bottom line that I see there. Those dark areas that I see in there, I just want to attack that. Now, I'm not going too high with that guard, but I'm attacking that line. Just getting a little bit of hair off my man here, keeping everything uh, clean. Now, the haircut's finally coming together. I always like to... Uh, really polished up my clippers with the Andes Masters. This is a cordless clipper, a really nice clipper, um, really similar to the corded Andes Masters, a classic clipper that's been around for years. So definitely really glad when they uh, came with this clipper. Cords are not in your way. You can kind of get into places, um, you know, that you really would be kind of hard if you had a cord. Not impossible, but just a little harder. So I like to finish uh, my haircuts with the Andes Masters Clipper. It just adds a real nice polishing touch. Now when you use uh, Andes Masters clothes, it's the equivalent to a triple zero uh, cut, which is like a stubbly bald. When you open that clipper all the way, it's equivalent to a one guard. So you basically get those two essentials and one clipper, and that's why you have the lever. So you can go to whatever you need, the triple, in between that, the one, I mean, you can get a half, that's the in between. So it's a really legit clipper. So I'm just doing my polishing work, I'll use the one guard right here. You'll see the areas that I'm using this one guard to just kind of polish off everything. Once I use the one guard, I'll work my way down. I'll go with the zero guard and polish uh, the haircut a little lower. And we'll go in all areas, up, down, left, right. As you can see, we'll do that all the way around this haircut just to kind of get everything nice and smooth and make sure that that transition uh, and this fade is really blending smooth, as smooth as we can. Now there's no perfect haircut out there, people. But still, I mean, hey, just like Pinsky in the background, my man's going places. I mean, came in with the quarantine cut, leaving a different man feeling good. So we'll go over this a few times. Since the fade is pretty much, you know, I mean, we're generally, I mean, we're, we're getting really close for this thing being done. So like I said, I just want to attack any hard lines. If I feel it's a one guard then I'll grab that one guard like right now I you know I'll just kind of easily go over it if I feel that there's some hair where we use the we did the half guideline with the half guard then I'll just go back and grab that half guard if I feel like there's hair where we use no guard I'll use no guard or if I feel like I need to use a trimmer to bolt that hair on the very bottom so that that transition into the fade is even cleaner now we'll use my trimmers. I like to use Andy's trimmers or Babilis trimmers. In this case, I use both. So I'll use those trimmers just to kind of get around the ears, bald out any hairs from the uh, neckline into where, you know, we have that stubble. I'll also clean off the neck hairs. I'll take this time to do that. Like I said, we're just about finished uh, with the haircut. So now we're just polishing the haircut up basically. So any areas where hair might be that you don't want it to be, you want to make sure you take uh, this time to just cover all your bases and go over all that. I just want to get the hair behind the ears. A lot of times really hard areas, a lot of barbers don't get back there good enough. Right around this area kind of around the jaw area. I just want to make sure everything's nice and clean. Now, I don't want to send my client home with any survivors behind the ear. Sometimes you have the long ears that just stick out from behind the ear. You just want to make sure you get that, okay? Um, as well, I like to use the Speedo clip, which is a two guard. It's a really good clip as far as just finishing touches on your blend. And then it looks like his hair is a little thicker than I want. So I'll take this time to get my thinning shears and just kind of thin out the tips. Now as a safety precaution, you always want to make sure that you have that comb between, you know, the shears and the head of the client. So it just ensures that, you know, those shears won't cut their head or anything. So, you know, you always want to 
Please make sure that you're doing everything safe. So keep that comb between the shears and the client. Make sure that, you know, that, you know, those shears never get close to the client's head as far as not having protection with the, the comb there. All right, so we'll just continue doing a little texturizing on the tips, getting that hair to kind of feather and, and cooperate a little bit more for us. Once I do this, I like to grab the blow dryer and kind of get out any like loose hairs that we've just cut that kind of have a hard time getting out. Hair has static electricity, so a lot of times those hairs are like to stick in there even though they've already been cut. So I also like to take this time, grab that blow dryer and just get any of those loose hairs out. So now that that's uh, out of there, we can apply some products. I like to apply product to the hair and not the scalp. There have been myths or, you know, it could be a fact that if you apply product to the scalp, then it can kind of make you bald faster. So you don't really need the product on the scalp anyway. So I always just like to lightly put the product on the hair, not work it all into the scalp really hard. And then at this time, we're just about finished, so I'll just take the time to line my client up. He likes to have a lineup. So I'm using the Andy's uh, Cordless Trimmer Clipper with the T-Outliner blade. We'll just go over his lineup nice and smooth, clean up any hairs that are on the forehead. A lot of times the forehead will have like little fuzzies that you can't really see but are still there. So I like to Take that time to get the fuzzies off, line them up, clean the haircut up in any way. Just really do the detailed work at the end. Looks pretty good from that side. All right, I like to face my clients to the mirror. And then if everything looks nice and even, you know, when you look at it through the mirror, then you're pretty probably accurate. So I'll just make sure everything's even, spin them around, see if everything blends good. It looks like everything's pretty clean here. I'll just take a little bit more time to kind of finish polishing up the haircut. Right now I'm using the Wall 100th Anniversary Cordless Clipper. If you've seen in my previous video, it's uh, definitely one of my favorite clippers as far as adding another, you know, for another finishing touch clipper. This is another one of those good clippers. Adds a really soft blend, really easy to use. And then just to finish the details, I like uh, using my shears. Any hairs that stick out, kind of hairs that are in no man's land, I like to take that time to get rid of those. this side and basically I'm looking for any hairs that just stick out of place stick out too far everything looks pretty good there all right cool so I'll just get a few more hairs uh, right off his neckline clean everything up and in this area, you just have to go really smooth. Just let the clippers do the cutting. Oh, what's that? Ah, I'm not finished. My man wants a design. All right, well, here we go. I guess he wants to add some more swag to his cut. Like we don't already have enough. <laughs> well, he shows me the picture, so he wants to just add a nice little design, no problem. We'll just go ahead and put that in for him. Let me see that picture one more time. All right, all right, all right, all right, cool. So we'll go ahead and attempt to put his uh, hard part in. I like to use the Babulous Clippers. And so this is basically how I'm doing that. This is essentially what he showed me. So I'm attempting to go for that. Now you never want to put really thick lines in at first. 
until you put the small line in and then comb the hair away. A lot of times if you put a thick line in and you comb the hair away, you see that the line is much thicker than you planned. So I always say just go with a really thin line and then comb that hair away to see what's there, what's not there. And then you could always thicken that line up. But just start with, you know, uh, really thin lines, just kind of the shape of what you're going for. Get the hair nice and cleaned up and then go back and clean up the design the way you want it. That's basically what I'm doing in this case. So now I'm cleaning everything up. All right, a little swag. All right, boom, so there it is. I uh, got the hard part in there, give him the mirror. Let him look over everything. Just want to make sure everything works out for him. Uh, make sure everything's good. All right. So it looks like we got the approval. We're all good. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you learned something. Thundercats. Till next Thunder time. Thundercats. See you guys soon.